Welcome to A Friend of Mine, a series of conversations with some incredible and inspiring women in business from regional and rural Australia. I'm Kimberly Finesse, your host and the founder and editor of Oak Magazine, and I cannot wait to introduce you to some amazing female entrepreneurs who will share with you their experience and knowledge of what it takes to start, grow and scale a successful business. So let me introduce you to A Friend of Mine. In a quaint township named Coolamon, a name derived from the Wiradjuri language and their word meaning water basin or water dish, is an ark. The Ark Coolamon, a luxury boutique accommodation situated in a restored historic church. Owners Merrin and Philip had a light bulb moment in late 2019 to give the old Methodist church a different purpose. Over the years, the church had served various purposes, including being leased as a dance studio and hosting niche music concerts, along with weddings and small celebrations. The couple eventually decided to restore and convert this space into boutique accommodation. This decision coincided with retirement from their secondary teaching careers. The two-year project gave Merrin and Phil the opportunity to utilise their skill sets in research, networking and collaboration, Merrin's passion for gardening, interior styling and preserving seasonal produce, along with their combined love for hospitality, sharing stories and a focus on well-being. In this episode, recorded in the 95-year-old church with its cathedral ceilings, Merrin shares her love for old buildings and the challenge of adapting them, the luxury of now having time and flexibility to pursue her creativity and the establishment of a women in business network in her region. Meet my friend and custodian of the Ark Coolamon, Merrin Glasgow, I've been reflecting on the overall, I suppose, of the ark and what it represents and how I come to be in love with it, basically, (laughs) or just adoring of it. I mean, I never tire of the space, and that is probably because of my my roots my background and which is essentially visual um, and growing up with parents that had antiques furnishings and had a a love for anything old and crafted and so that's been very instrumental in us making a decision Philip and I my husband and I to make a decision to purchase something that was not planned but as I said it was sort of instant love at first sight and upon seeing it and we were looking at something entirely different in terms of real estate but anyway here we are and after purchasing I thought what have we done but um, no regrets whatsoever. So I think just the, the love for old, the love for craftsmanship is one reason for our purchase and going forward what we've done with it to where it is today. Throughout the building there are other influences or other examples that reflect significant influences in my life which is a love for textiles which came about through my mother and my mother's mother who were a ma- well mum still is and her mother was an amazing seamstress exquisite and I was very heavily influenced and later in life or probably at the age of 12 actually started making anything and everything with fabric particularly clothing um, and so the softer furnishings from the sort of the the garments I the bathrobes through to cushions and table covers and I love to dress surfaces so and all people um, so that's you can see rem- examples of that throughout and I have there's a big part of me that wants to sort of continue doing that you know it's another extension of me that I'm passionate about and could easily go down that rabbit hole and having a visual background once again a mother with a gift in that area and realized at quite an early age that there was a gift there with me Um, and a, a bit of an epiphany at the age of 14 to make a decision to teach and to teach visual arts and a mother that supported that in the 70s which was quite a pioneering decision I think. Um, So very supportive background of my passions and interests. I remember as an adolescent wanting to dress windows and I think a bit of a full circle's happened there where I just love to dress surfaces and visualise two-dimensional and three-dimensional 
surfaces, spaces, and just, yeah, dress them or, or curate them. There's connections there between now and many years ago that's sort of been present all my life at different times. Yeah. yeah. So that sort of explains the maybe the cosmetic side of things. Um, so normally I obviously hit record early and then we, we go in and it's a bit scripted and it's it's just to have a start and an end. So my start's always like, hi, Meryn, welcome to the podcast. And, you know, then we, we go off and, you know, tell me about a friend of yours to, to lock in the end. Mm-hmm. The thing is, I've obviously been recording this and I, I obviously asked a prompt, just said, oh, hey, so this is what we're going to talk about. Mm-hmm. But that was so good. That's why I didn't say anything. And I very slightly put the headphones on so I could make sure our audio was good because I could sit here and just listen to your stories, Meryn. And that's a perfect intro. Great. Yep. Thank so you. We're, <laughs> normally we'd go now and go, okay, we're going to start the podcast now. <laughs> but we're going to start this one differently today. And I think that was just going straight in with that. Okay. It was just so good to listen to. So Meryn, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you for the opportunity. (laughs) Um, It is the most magnificent space that I have ever recorded a podcast. Uh, Look, the audio I think might echo a little bit Mm. because we have these incredible cathedral ceilings. Mm. But there's no other place I'd rather be than probably here. And, you know, you've referred to it a few times that you're in love with it, you adore it. I can see how you so quickly fell in love. I'm not sure obviously what it looked like when you first saw it, but when I walked in the door yesterday, I'm a scent person, I I say that all the time, but I think it's the the scent first that got me. Um, I feel like it's obviously some of the products you've got in here and it was just, it was beautiful. It, I don't even know what the underlying scent, if if it's bergamot or uh, what it is, but it was just as like, Wow, that that smells welcoming, mm. comforting. Yes. Yeah, and then I just stood there and I think I just said, "Oh wow. 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 Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This is <gasps> And then yeah, just and in every corner there is something to look at. You know, and I'm assuming when you say, you know, there's lots of layers and yes. um they're just there's probably a little story behind each vignette would they yeah, be called absolutely yeah and that you yes. have set up and mm. I think if you had had a camera in here yesterday Mary, it was like a little kid just running to this bit and looking and then oh over there there's a bit something there and um it's amazing so let's get started with the podcast thank you for having me in the ark in Coolamon. I've never ever stayed in something so incredible that obviously has a story behind it. I've I've seen these places on Instagram and just thought, oh, just imagine if you could, you know, you could stay in one of those. So thank you so much for, for having me. How did you come across this incredible building? Thank you for your, for your very kind words. It's an absolute pleasure to have you and a joy. And it's lovely to meet you. <laughs> How did we come across this? It's It's a case of, there's quite a backstory to that. That's okay. We um, were leasing a farmhouse that was basically halfway between my husband's and my school, his being in Wagga Wagga and mine in Juni. And we're just off the Olympic Highway and we lived, we had our children and brought them home to what we call the paddocks. (laughs) And we adored this farmhouse, beautiful old Australian farmhouse, leased it for next to nothing, had a wonderful relationship with the landlord. And we got to a point and thought, gee, we better get real and start looking at buying property. And we can't have this farmhouse. It's just not possible, feasible in real life, in real terms. And thought, right, we have to get over it and start looking beyond. And Philip was looking at, Philip, my husband, was looking at um, the possibility of some land on the river, um, the Murrumbidgee River, that was up for sale that he noticed by default when we had our our son playing a game of soccer close by and um, thought, right, I'll pursue this for sale sign contacted the real estate agent and um, was told later in the week that it was going to go off the market 
um, and no longer available for sale. I'm trying to make this short. <laughs> no. <laughs> Stop. We have plenty of time. And, There's nowhere to be. Um, anyway, he's, he thought, I'm not a lover of the Daily Advertiser or a paper person, newspaper person. Anyway, he thought, no, come Saturday, I'm going to double check whether that is for sale or not for sale. And sure enough, it wasn't for sale. Um, and we were also waiting on a builder's permit to see if it was possible, you know, should the sale be out, become ours, whether we could build and, you know, we'd need to have a builder's permit, etc. Anyhow, um, the paper confirmed that it was no longer for sale. But when we opened that paper, this church was in it. So we had a short space of time to come over here, open the doors. We were the third people who were interested. There were two previous vendors before us or owners before us. And for various reasons, very different reasons, they were forced to sell. And so the doors were opened and we looked at the ceiling and thought, this is for us. And the rest is history. It all happened very quickly. And our children were absolutely horrified and mortified that they were going to be living in a church. They were both in their early adolescence and in a small community that they weren't familiar with anybody within the community at that stage. And so that was a, you know, my goodness, I'm mortified. I, why? Why? <laughs> but, you know, fond memories of them, you know, wheelies along the floorboards in the the hall behind us, which was the initial Methodist church that has been moved twice to where it is now and extended in all directions. And the Methodist church council at the time, it's a little bit of a backstory around the history. The parishioners grew in number, the church council funds were available to inject finances into building a second and larger church, which is now the Ark. And it was built over a two-year period during a drought. And the church council once again then decided, OK, we have to halt the building process. We need to put a structural arch in situ in the southern wall, which is where it was planned to be extended, and have the windows behind the pulpit, which didn't happen. Um, but it continued to serve its purpose and role as a church um, and the weather board which was the original Methodist church became the Sunday school and the community hall and when the church was deconsecrated as was the Presbyterian church to become the uniting church the ark or the old Methodist church as it's fondly called just became a community facility and then it served the role as a real estate and we um, were the third people to, to buy it And um, in 2005. And as I said, it was very serendipitous. Um, but there's another facet to that too. I, I had a um, reading done a few years okay. prior by a woman <laughs> out of Geelong and there are various things that were mentioned during that reading that have direct connection with being here, I, I believe, um, just various things that were said leading up to our purchase and there's correlation. So, but you know, it um, was a case of it was the right time. Mm. The, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. Oh, it was just on the tip mm. of my tongue. And mm. I loved when you said that you walked in and you looked up mm. and you just knew. Mm. There's something about that, yes. isn't there? Yes. Just looking up and the sleeping quarters are raised. Yeah. Would that have been the choir up there or what would have been? No, we we instigated yeah. the mezzanine. So yeah. if you can visualise, it was literally a shell. Yep. Structurally very sound. Um, we were very fortunate to find a fabulous, wonderful group with a wonderful skill set that knew old, majority of them from the Shire, a few that we had to outsource purely because some people who had those skills weren't able physically or had other commitments at the time during the build. Um, but the building designer, new old, loved the challenge, wanted the challenge. Um, the builder, there's another story behind the builder, we wanted that 
particular builder, Ivan, at the time, but he had other commitments and the other builder that thought would come on board at the round table, which was January 2020, he thought he'd take it on and then thought twice and notified it that, no, it's not his kind of build. And then we thought, OK, um, we've got the electrician, we've got the plumber, we've got the building designer, we've got the heritage architect, all lined up, all at the round table. Yes, would love to be on board. Um, and so we're in Melbourne thinking, OK, what do we do now? And we received a text from the fellow that our plumber recommended to us and said, he's your man. And he contacted us and said, I'm now in a position to come on board. Are you interested? And we said, yes. Yes, please. And so he has a cross-section of... Builds throughout his career has also had other trades under his belt. He comes from a family of five boys whose father was basically, is basically a master builder. So it was a breadth of skills and um, an eye for aesthetics and a visionary really when it comes to visualising spaces and what I can do with the space. Yes, he was directed by the designer, but... You know, he'd often say, I, I'm awake at night trying to visualise how I'm going to get these I-beams and C-beams through that narrow door of course. to create the mezzanine. And yes. um, a local fellow um, is behind all the steel work. And, and Philip has, with a silversmithing background, has a love for metal. And we thought we'd basically echo the 1920s, the deco era, which we both adore and work with the fact that this was built in the 1920s and we'd work with wood and steel. If it had all been wood, it would be too much wood. So it's really a marriage of wood and metal as our key materials within the building. And we thought of the linear aspects in the design features of the, of the beautiful lead light windows, we'd echo that in the steel work. So between both Philip and I thought of what was already in situ with the building itself and how we could merge that with what was created within that shell structurally. And you have really respected the original integrity Absolutely. You know, of the, yeah. the church, which yeah. I think that's sort of the right thing to do, isn't it? it well, it <laughs> is. I mean, we, to be honest, both of us are not inclined towards beliefs around religion. We just we don't sort of think along those lines. But as Philip has said, religion has given us so much in terms of beauty through the aesthetics, through song, through music. And the church has served, in, since we purchased in 2005, it's served a number of different roles that we've orchestrated. It was leased as a dance studio for a number of years and that was a joy to have students of all ages coming through and dancing for a few years. And they came and went. Um, and then that little chapter ended, they moved. And then we also had three niche music concerts in here all, all around the genre of bluegrass, which we orchestrated and, and coordinated. And um, they were very niche, intimate settings. And then I ran out of puff when it came to running another <laughs> event. Yeah. Of, um, Loved it. Loved the acoustics of just beautiful music playing, jamming all weekend. It was just wonderful experiences. But And I think I'm somebody that has lots of different directions and itches to scratch, basically. Yeah, yeah. So that was explored for a while. We've had a couple of small weddings in here at mates' rates and just we were trialling that different This things. is all before the concept of the ARC came yeah. about. Um, and we've catered for a lot of private dinners in here as well. Um, so we've had an opportunity to listen to the acoustics in different contexts yep. and settings. For song and music, mm. incredible. Yeah. <laughs> for podcasting. <laughs> as you said, it's there because I can hear it. Um, There's a bit of a reverberation. Yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was the thing, like to be on that mezzanine level this morning and wake up and have the sun stream directly through the lead light uh, and just, you know, I, 
And again, I'm probably very similar to you. Like religion doesn't have a big part of my life. Yeah. Uh, but there is something sacred. There's something that, I don't know, that you can just... You can feel you can it. Feel. I wanted yeah. to say, I'm like, oh, is that too... Is that strong enough to say I can? F- you can feel it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's just... It is. It's... Um, and I've often asked myself, you know, um, around my belief system, what is it? And it's... I think you mentioned earlier just you look up at the at the ceilings and you can you just I don't know you want you want to look up and I think it's just about scale and height and you know maybe there's a a um metaphor there for aspiration you know with aspiration I I find it very inspiring space um something else I'd noticed and I suppose that's what the arc provides for you is just this space that you can bring in all this experience because I I think that's what I'm learning I mean I've I've spent the two days almost with you and I'm, I'm still learning stuff I'm like how have you fit so much in your life um so many different things but something I noticed I stay in a lot of hotels when I crawled into bed last night Marin mm. like even the the feel of the sheets mm. so I know someone's like oh do we what, what are we talking about this for but this is that that extra level that I have felt as soon as you made contact mm. you know the the hospitality mm. and the attention to detail of everything mm. um, and I will get whatever those sheets are because I need them on my bed mm. now but it's a textural thing isn't yes. it it's very tangible yes. and I think coming from a print mag um, that has yes. a, a tangible feel to mm. it uh, but that's something else I've noticed like there are some eco products yep I can see that sustainability is a, a big influence yes. for you as well. Yes, most definitely. I'm very tactile um, and, and visual, as I've mentioned, but I just feel that we're within this amazing space with an incredible team of people behind the making the concept come to fruition and we've started it. We need to continue forward with enhancing the space with beauty and quality that never ages it just speaks for itself really and it was very difficult to make some of the decisions around the products the bath products and the linen products I spent hours sourcing or making decisions as to okay who do I support but look um, they're small Australian businesses whose ethics are around sustainability and maintaining that and the arc I think essentially reflects that it's about another chapter in the building's life we see ourselves as custodians and there'll be another custodian eventually it's all about people walking in and experiencing something that's different and provides an experience that that remains it's a joy to provide something that has that influence or impact or leave it behind yeah how did it get its name the arc (sighs) Okay, that's Philip. Um, (laughs) He's a wonderful storyteller. It's a gift of his and his life is incredibly rich and diverse. I just got into bed one evening and said, the ark. I said, the ark? The name for the church. And I thought, okay, well, supposedly Jesus did a lot of preaching from boats. And if you look at the ceiling and you think of it inverted, yes. it's yep. the bottom yeah. of a boat. And it's we decided to think, okay, Noah's Ark, the Ark. And that's yeah. how it was that's conceived. How it came up with its name. So it's the ceiling combined with Philip. <laughs> <laughs> and the it's an eclectic mix of pieces, but the rowing boat, we bought that in Melbourne and it was on Philip's birthday and I took him into this place that I'd been researching online and I thought right I'm taking you there there's a fair few pieces that I could see in there. yeah <laughs> and um, he didn't look at eye level he looked above and thought hmm do I buy it and I said it's your birthday buy it put it in the church do we know who Lynn Parslow is no oh we've tried gosh. to f- discover anyone out there listening yes Lynn Parslow so P-A-R S L O W. Yes. A rower, she would have had to be mm. somewhere and someday. Absolutely. And the fellow 
behind the retail outlet said it was somebody had it in Brighton. Okay. And so whether there was a Parslow in Brighton that rode, Brighton, Melbourne, I don't know, but it was made in New South Wales. Mm. So, yeah. yes, yeah. if anybody looks, knows, I we would love to know the history. Even circa, do we know what year? No. no. Oh, gosh. I'd like have to old. climb up and look at the year that it was made. I yeah. can't remember. It's very I've old. forgotten. But it's, yeah, so there's a few mm. references to water yeah. throughout. Yeah. It's just genius. Um, yeah, both of you are and you're both school teachers, mm. you know. I mean, thank God there's so many generations that have had both of you uh, <laughs> looking after them. Um, so school teaching, you love visual arts. How do you become a business owner? Like what has that transition been like for you? Oh, gosh, I'm early to it. I'm a novice really in terms of time frame when it comes to business. It's very much obviously a very small business and I'm the person behind it. And I've actually embraced it. I mean, I've discovered that, you know, it's multifaceted when it comes to the marketing side of things. And that to me, that's probably the most challenging aspect for it. I mean, if I go back to just... It connects with the question that you've just asked. Um, In order to get this up and running, there was a DA required that was hours and hours of work and lots of hoops to jump through. But it was a learning curve and I think this is the teacher in me. I love a challenge. I adore a challenge. As long as it's sort of something that's achievable for me and I can manage Okay, so the DA needed to be done, the white card needed to be done, the owner builder certificate needed to be completed. So I thought, right, that's part and parcel. Go, girl. You, It's inevitable you need to do that. We got it across the line. The owner builder certificate in the long run didn't need to be done. However, I learned a lot through the process and between council and the fellow overseeing the project and ticking the boxes as we progressed, um, sort of said it's a a commercial enterprise, you know, potentially that's what it is. Um, There were many steps to get it to where it was. So I think those various steps sort of were a precursor to having a business of this kind, retraining in hospitality towards the end of my secondary years and working informally in hospitality with different stages of having this building. So I think they're all sort of skills that relate or are precursors to where I am now. I'm enjoying it immensely. Just the the communication and the collaboration, I suppose, that, that are facets, I guess, of running a business of whatever scale. I take to those quite easily and I enjoy Yeah. Them. Yep. What have been some collaborations that you've done since it became the ARC? Oh, well, in terms of collaborations, it's probably minuscule at this stage because it's really through communication and correspondence. Um, but I do have a desire to share this space, not only as accommodation, it's primarily accommodation, but just co- informal conversations that have cropped up through locals and or people through just ad hoc messages via Instagram platform or social media. You know, it's it could serve many roles. It could, and I would love to see this as a small workspace. I can mm. see it as a residency option. Um, the majority of furnishings throughout here are mobile and it's very, I think it aesthetically and structurally, it lends itself to a small conference space, as workspace. I can see it as collaborative for shoots, um, products yeah. that would work beautifully in here. It would. I think I'm probably thinking along the same line as you. Definitely that photo shoot. It's almost like there's little breakout spaces. Yeah. There's probably four or five breakout spaces mm. just within here yes. that you could have if you did bring together, hey, six girlfriends or something yeah. that are in business mm. around surrounding towns. Yes. Uh, just to get out of the business, where wherever you're working, mm. out of home, come into somewhere that does definitely spark creativity uh, and, you know, and, and work together mm. 
But then you've got this beautiful garden outside as well yeah. that you could really sit and just yes. you know, soak in nature. Mm. The garden is very influential um, in terms of dressing those surfaces again and and the vignettes. Um, but it, it's a space that can go be internal or external or go between. There's sort of, I don't see a boundary at all between the building and what's beyond. Um, and I, yes, I think, that has sort of been one of my thought processes to create an opportunity for it to be a space that beautiful creative space mm. absolutely um in terms of a team with business mm. have you uh engaged services of sort of different industries so you know looked at your social media um, or your email marketing or your website or your photography, how, how has that all come together? Have there been people within the local community you've reached out to? In terms of outsourcing adjuncts to the ARC, yes. I look after the Instagram side of things and the maintaining, go, <laughs> maintaining the, the internals and the hospitality side of things. Um, have outsourced the website and have um, approached other bodies that are behind the marketing of it and continue sort of that bigger scale marketing such as optimization etc which is all part and parcel of it and various other people that I've worked online with that you know advance the skill set I guess that are all part and parcel of Yes, this continuing. Uh, in terms of, of where we are, we are in Coolamon. I don't even know where the next renovated church would be in terms of accommodation. Mm. Do you think that's a really big, bold step to create business like this here? Mm. Yes, most definitely. Being in the fortune position of living within and being a custodian of a building of this kind, I... <laughs> am closely watching <laughs> um, other people explore things that buildings that are points of difference and I think COVID has certainly created opportunities with for tree change and working remotely and people being in a position to discover in regional Australia the abundance of churches that are no longer that have been relinquished or are in the process of being relinquished and people are getting very excited about the prospect of either purchasing and creating a residence for themselves and or converting. Yeah. Mm. Um, as I said, I've, I've seen it on Instagram. I've always wanted to stay in one and uh, probably some – I mean, it's a – it's, this podcast never about me, but um, it's it's a bit of a stressful time, you know. I've yeah. I've been away from home for two weeks already. Uh, this will be week three. Um, you know, there's there's lots of projects going on at the moment. Interviewing people's a, an honour and a pleasure, but there's lots that goes into that, you know, to prepare yourself and then always wondering whether the the audio is working. Um, but it's interesting. I've felt like light hearted like here which is really odd because I'm, I'm smack bang in the middle really and I'm at the end of that three week yeah. so usually I'd be a, a bit of a mess Marin by this stage um but I'm really relaxed good like I, I I feel that that's this the building your hospitality uh just being out in rural you know being in the van yeah you know not being able to be on my phone like I, I can't driving um so I might be listening to podcasts, but generally I might have some music and I'll just stop it and then I'll just I'll just talk to myself like a verbal journal mm, and lovely. yeah, it's it's been really I think and this has been um, the base of it just that I don't know that relaxation. Mm. I just did an Insta live actually, uh, and I had I spoke to someone just straight after it and she goes, "You look really happy." Oh, and that's I'm like, lovely. I am. Like I'm living my best life, my yeah. um, best unpaid life, but um, <laughs> I'm a, I, like I am and yeah. I, I feel like this space mm. has a lot to do with it. Mm. Yep. Okay. Yeah, well, even even at night, yeah. like the, the moonlight oh, that's coming yeah. through. Like yeah. it's, it's so special. Thank you. And, you know, guests that have come and gone that have either left a, a comment in the guest book and some choose not to and that's absolutely fine. You know, it's their call, no one else's. But there's a common thread and you've referred to that 
or made references to that thread a few times today. Um, and it is just about walking in and, it, and there's a restorative aspect yeah. to it. Yes, um, that's and, what it, it is. and it is. It is quite a, it is a sanctuary in, you know, and I know those words have connections with church and inferences there, but they also stand alone and can have, be used in many other contexts, I think, um, which is just wonderful. But people make references to beauty and being, feeling restored and just relaxing. Yeah. Uh, and anyone that listens knows that I'm, I'm not sort of that, that way inclined, inclined with those sort yeah. of things. It's taken me a lot to get into sound healing. Um, Nat, who does that with me, will know that I'm a struggle with that. Like, she's just like, oh, could you just let go? Like, it's, yeah. it's hard for me. Um, and sometimes I find it hard to, uh, not to believe, but to give myself up to those things that they do have Yes. You know, a release within you. Yes. So when I say that this is making me feel lighthearted, restorative, mm. I'm able, I just, I think I just did that, an easy breath. Mm. Like that's, yeah. you know, um, yeah, that's, that you've helped create that. It's, you know, your hospitality. Um, and I know that both yourself and Phil have, have mentioned that because um, you invited me to tea last night and you're like, look, we don't, we, don't want to impose and we wouldn't impose on any other guests and I think that's also been something that I've really enjoyed yeah Lovely. it's just to, yeah. um I was talking to my husband uh, earlier and just said it was so nice to to sit on mm. the back porch yeah have the sunset and have a conversation or have a meal cooked for me <laughs> Not that, I mean that happens every night <laughs> with yeah. him but um to have a beautiful meal that hospitality again and talk to strangers like mm. I mean that's out of everyone's well, comfort isn't it well yes but it works both ways because for me too I I just thought here is this person Kimberly whom I've been following and and listening to for some time and I thought I don't know this person but I've it's just been incredibly easy and that's just you know reflection in this morning's gathering over at um, the library with various women in, in Coolerman. Um, again, it was just your communication, your ex, your projection is just oh, thank you comes across as one of ease and and confidence and oh. um, I felt yeah the confidence is feigned so I must be doing a good job oh um, yeah but uh, it, even that I mean that was really lovely uh, so to, you know to be around this shire at yeah. the moment uh, and as we've worked with Laura before with Oak mm. we've uh, done some work together but for her to have a morning tea like that and I think to see so many um, you never know who's going to turn up if yeah. anyone um, but to see such a a nice beautiful gathering of what 13 15 people yeah, yeah of mm. women uh and what I loved what Laura did was that introduction yes. so go around the circle yeah. introduce yourself mm. how long have you and I noticed everyone was how long they've been in the region mm. for mm. um and I think that helps with that connection yeah. piece yeah. yes I think um uh, Laura Jackie and um Helen with their various roles that do intersect or overlap they um they're just the right fit, the right mix, and they're passionate about their ground and their their territory and the the Shire itself, generally speaking, and and it's effortless for them. It's and it's just inclusive as part of their role too, and their joy of um, and support of of women coming together and something else that came off it a little sort of bit of a conversation I just grabbed on right to the end was um you know we need to do more of this we need yeah. a, a women in business network yes. here like for me I mean that just makes my heart swell mm. and um you know whether that's informal or formal going forward but it, I think we're on the on right the, track yeah I think yeah. we're on the edge of that now yeah happening and yeah. growing and there's Yes, well, that cross section of people today—it um, was very evident that there is desire and support and interest for that kind of network and/or networking to happen yeah. and grow and. 
probably and it's sustained. the cheerleading, isn't it? Like it even is. the first person introduced herself. Yes. And then the one next to her goes, you need to tell them about your exhibition. You know, those props yeah. to, to mm. find your confidence mm. and say, and own it. Mm. Like, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just letting everyone else know. There are a few cheerleaders in this community oh, that have been here yeah. for some time or varying degrees of time. And, um, yeah, they're finding one another and they're enjoying each other immensely and, and feeding off each other. And so that growth is... And, and I, in the time that I've been here, it's really only within the last probably half a dozen years that that is evident, that that cheerleading and that connection is definitely growing growing in yes. in strength and numbers yep mm. i wonder why we, we definitely yeah. need it but uh i i've been sitting on this and i don't know um how best to articulate it i just i noticed it was an older group mm. as well yes that's that's encouraging like that women are maybe getting to retirement age whether yeah. it's just before or just after yes. and starting a business did yeah. you notice that yeah, yeah. most definitely yeah. yeah and I think um I've been in a position to have that flexibility and probably extend myself with much greater ease and without any accountability I suppose you know I I put all of the things that I've spoken about earlier on on hold while my children were dependent um and even though I kept maintain I kept finding time to pursue my creativity it was pockets of time or it was holiday time and but I never forgot I never lost sight of it but it was just pigeonholed I guess rather than continuous and now I'm at the other end where I think flexibility time's not an issue and and it's just gorgeous and I think yes it was evident today that there's there's that yeah and people are loving it yeah and um with that needs more support too though more like when we're talking social media as you said it's not an extension of your generation uh it's just on mine it's definitely my kids um you know it, it's I suppose it's making sure that tech side that education knowledge workshop yeah. skills come in so that these businesses have an opportunity to yeah, most reach that bigger audience. Yeah, most definitely. And and Laura has some things in mind with Business Month coming up in October, so there's some workshops lined up there. And I think the audience that was there today will be the audience there no matter what their age or where they're at in life because they are hungry for that and open yeah. to it and very receptive, will welcome the opportunity and take away from it what they will, but it'll only enhance working on that and very aware I think the people that we have as stakeholders within the area of tourism and hospitality and ed education are very on top of it and working for it for and it. with it yeah I actually could talk to you for quite some time even probably a two-part three-part series oh, you gosh. know uh, yeah like talking about the education system what you've seen what you yeah. think it's going now like all of that but um I did want to speak about the arc and and how it's came to be and mm, how you. you you've influenced it so um I suppose I'll bookend the conversation with my favorite question which is uh can you tell me about a friend of yours that we need I, to know about? I can, and it is Angela Gash, who I've met through Instagram, and Angela has opened a little store here, which is only open a few days a week, which is around Friday, Saturday, maybe some Sundays. But Angela um, and I overlap with a love well, we're both creatives, I guess, and we overlap with our shared loves and passions around all things textile, all things beautiful. And it's a gorgeous retail gift store that has a point of difference. It's beautifully created. And Angela actually resides in Wood End and wears quite a few hats <laughs> and, and travels generally fortnightly to open her doors. If not Angela, it's her mum who's... because their origins are area park and um, so she has a, a connection to this part of the world that goes back um, and this beautiful store became available and I think with the encouragement of family so it's it's um, a quarian and she's a beautiful person with a wonderful 
insight and gift. I and mean, wood is glorious. around my neck of the woods. Yeah. <laughs> like that's a, I know, it's quite a drive. It's a long way from home. Yeah. Uh, that says something to, I think, to establish a store in a town so far away. Yeah. And, but, you know, we've had stories on the podcast. We've had stories in the mag of, of people that maybe come from the city or come mm. from another town. Uh, ex, you know, and you do, you walk up the street, you look in the buildings that are for lease mm. and you can't help but dream. Exactly. You know? you just it's can't heritage, help but think. the whole oh. of the, the landscape and the uh, the built scape and the natural landscaping they just work it harmoniously and the heritage is just beautiful and it's a gorgeous little town to oh, it's drive beautiful. into yeah. and be a part of and it's a lovely feel about it there's coffee i found coffee <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, amazing coffee um so yeah i've shouted them on out on instagram today and definitely will be visiting again tomorrow <laughs> uh but you know a church is built for community it mm. is it's, it's to bring people together um and I think what you've created, what you've restored and, you know, being the custodian of it is – has community, has connection yeah. all built around it Yeah, Thank uh, you. F- for people like us to enjoy. So I, I hope that, you know, whether it's a far afield, it's a metro coming in or, or really um, whether it's with your girlfriends um, or just to have a weekend away, it's it's – beautiful like I I probably need to get my thesaurus out and have a look at some more words other than inspiring beautiful wow amazing do you know what I mean it's just thank you for all of the above it's um it's a feeling thank you for enjoying the space and having yeah it's been lovely thank you for being on the podcast oh a pleasure and an honor thank you Now, before you take off with all that inspiration and knowledge, we'd love for you to leave a review on our podcast so that we can continue to amplify women's voices in the media. And if you have any questions, we'd like to celebrate a win. You can always connect with us on Facebook and Instagram at Oak Magazine AU. I'm so glad we've met and that now you know a friend of mine.